I mean, like, I love coming to Nigeria, mm -hmm. but one person that I really admire in Nigeria is you. Thank you. Do you know that I know you more than anyone in Nigeria? Oh, yeah? I don't even know whether you're an entertainer, a musician, <laughs> or an activist, or a politician. <laughs> well, um, the, only, the only thing I have not officially declared out of all those things uh -huh. is the politician. <laughs> <laughs> but everything else, that's me. Faz the bad guy. That's me. That's not your real name. My real name is Falarin Falano. Born and raised in Nigeria. Born and raised in Nigeria. Raised throughout, apart from my university days. And where did yeah. you go for university? In the UK. University, the UK. University of Reading. Okay. Yeah. So you went to invest in the UK to yeah, study I, what? Yeah, I stayed in the UK for some time, actually. Oh, oh okay. That's yeah. a UK accent, mm. isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so who are you stayed in the UK? Um, a place called Reading. Just 30 I mean, minutes from... what course from were you studying? Oh, what was I studying? Uh, law. Law? You did law? I did law. I'm yeah, a barrister. Right. <laughs> and then from there? From there, I came back to Nigeria and I went to the Nigerian Law School. Why did you leave the UK in the first place? Um, I just went for university and when I was done, I knew I couldn't live in, in that country. It's too cold. I, sometimes it, 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 that weather I do depress me. <laughs> so, <laughs> Are you going to say you were depressed in the UK? <laughs> no, I wouldn't go that, to that extent. But I say the weather is very, it's very gloomy and, you know, it just, ah, it wasn't, it, I, I didn't feel like I was at home. So I felt like I had to come back home. Came back home, went to Nigerian Law School, officially qualified to practice as a barrister. And then what happened? And then... <laughs> <laughs> and then what happened, huh? And then I took, I took my certificate, uh -huh. I kept it here. I took off the wig and gown, I hung it. And I said, look, this music of it in, this is what I want to do with my life. But will you call yourself a musician? I, yeah, I would I'll call myself a musician. No, you know, far, far, you know, for me, I won't call you a musician. <laughs> Let me tell you your first song that I ever heard. I was in China that time. Mm -hmm. This is Nigeria. This is Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Do you know that that song made you so famous in the mm -hmm. entire Africa? Yeah. I got to know you through that. Oh, yeah? What really inspired that song, bro? Mm. I mean, this is Nigeria. Um, it's basically inspired by i mean it's i think it's pretty clear it's self-explanatory it's everything that's happening on this side of the world mm. you know of course i took uh, childish gambinos this is america yeah and um what i did was i interpreted it in my own way from my own perspective you know it happens all the time it's, it's the culture you know in hip-hop it's called you know doing a cover for a song so i just thought let me translate this from a uh, from a nigerian perspective and i think it was very widely received. Very. <laughs> the, 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 the reason that everyone could uh, relate with it is because it was so literal. It was so literal, it was so blatant, it was so in your face. It was, it was not holding anything back. You know, it was not being, not sugarcoating anything. Just putting it out there as it is. What do you think is the main problem of this country? Hmm. Whew, wow. Uh, where do I start from? So many problems, so many issues. Where do I start from? Is it lack of electricity? Is it uh, infrastructure? Is it uh, education? Is it healthcare? <laughs> Is it the grand problem of corruption? Where do I even start from? There's so many issues. Um, but the main problem, the biggest problem that I think we're suffering from is that we do not, we do not love ourselves enough. Wow. Let's come off a road. Motor they come. <laughs> Motor they come. <laughs> You said you do not love yourself yeah. like asking. Ah, uh, no, no, no. Now you want jammers. Okay, I'll come, I'll come. You don't love yourselves as in? Yeah, I feel like as Africans as a whole, this is not even just it's Nigeria. Nigeria. As Africans as a whole, we don't love ourselves enough. I think a part of it is PTSD as well. It's PTSD from, of course, you know, what we faced in the, in the past historically, the slave trade era, uh, the colonial era is, is so a lot of it is PTSD. So we haven't fully found who we are. And that's why some of our biggest issues are things that we took from the Europeans. Religion, <laughs> you know, just the way of life, just the Western. Uh, 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 now, in most African countries, yeah. Nigeria, of course, being, being top of that list, in most African countries, everything that is being consumed, everything that is being used, used is not produced in the country we are importing everything every single thing 
how do you expect your economy to survive on that? How do you expect if every single thing you have to pay for, you have to pay, continuously pay, bring, oh, I want to brush my teeth, pay. pay. You know how much, you, if you wake up in Lagos, you know how much you are spending. Exactly. I wake up, I have to brush my teeth, toothpaste, I'll pay. I have to eat, I pay. I have to, like, naturally, your pockets will feel it. And that's why economy keeps going down, keeps, we need to believe in who we are, but we don't because the ordinary man thinks that if it's imported, it's good. good. Is it, is it because of our mindset? It's a mindset, it's a and that's why I said we, it is it's a colonial mindset, but we have not tapped out of it. We haven't. That's why we don't believe. That's why I said we don't love ourselves. Are enough. you trying to say that it's time for Africans to wake up? Yes, now for, for black people all around the world, even in the United States, black lives matter. You know, black lives matter, black lives matter. And, you know, because those people are still continuously looking down on us. But once we start to love ourselves and believe, in ourselves, other people will see the good in you now. If if we are brothers, yeah, and we're not even treating each other good, mm. how do you expect somebody that is an outsider to treat <laughs> us good? Do you, you know? Think Look that at what is happening in Uganda. Oh my goodness, Museveni. Museveni is terrorizing Bobby Wine. Wine. How old is Museveni? But now you see. <laughs> let, let me let me tell you something. Like whatever Museveni is doing, the entire AU is quiet. Mm. So if African Union is quiet. What do you expect an ordinary citizen in Africa do, bro? Exactly. And that's what I'm saying. The mindset, the mindset, especially of the crop of people that have stayed in power. You cannot, cannot imagine that Museveni was doing an interview the other day. And they, <laughs> <laughs> and they asked him, they said, Museveni, why have you refused? I think it was Amampo. Amampo why yeah. have you refused to leave Uganda alone? What is he? He said that there's nobody that can do what he has done. He said, what have you done? He said, oh, I, I rescued them from diseases. Dying. When from they dying. When they, oh, man. That is, that is his, that is his um, achievement. achievement. What is, oh, man. It's, it's, it's shameful. Man. It's disgraceful, man, the mindset. If you had the chance to change one thing in Africa, what will it be? This is it. This is what I've just said, you know. So I would, if I had some magical power, mm. <laughs> I would make everybody immediately tap out of that mindset. Just stop believing in who we are. Start, start, just like, there's a great man called, um, what's this man from Burkina Faso? Burkina Faso. Oh man. The, uh, what's his name? I know his name, he's just, he's going in my head. Anyway, this great man from Burkina Faso, he was a young man. He was a young man when he took power. Yeah. He took power and he said to them, Anything we're consuming, anything we're making, uh, sorry, anything we're consuming in this country, we're making it here. We're cutting away, you know, all European ties because France, for the longest time, mm. had a stronghold on Burkina Faso. But when he came in, that's when he even changed the name. Mm. That wasn't the name of the country at the time. You know, changed the name of the country to Burkina Faso, which has a meaning in their language, you know, basically alluding to the fact that, you know, everything is by us, everything is for us. Um, and that ideology, mm. pan Africanism, an Africanism, Thomas Sankara. That Thomas is the Sankara. man. Oh my that is the man I was trying to remember his name. <laughs> he just had a moment yeah. there. <laughs> so, if we all subscribe to this ideology, to let everybody just realize that, come, we can do. We are, we are the most intelligent, but the, but the strongest the physically. One. We are the chosen ones. The chosen but why one. can't we just see that? Do you think Africa will ever unite? Afri Africa can definitely unite. There's so much beauty in Africa, you know, there's so much richness, so much wealth in Africa. And back to the point again, if everybody taps into this mentality, <laughs> like I said, it's called Pan-Africanism. So once I believe in us, what we stand for, of course I will love you more. Thank you. Naturally, I will love you more. And that's one Africa, that's unity. And I think since we're a musician, you know, Nigerian music, uh, people are saying that Nigerian music should be banned in Cameroon. Have you, have you heard that? <laughs> it's funny. I haven't heard it, but it's funny. Why are they banning Nigerian music in Cameroon? I don't even know why. Because, I mean, all of us consume Nigerian music. I mean, mm. they are the big brother of Africa, whether you like it or not. Mm. You must understand that Nigerian music is here to stay. Yeah. Do you have anything to say about people who rise against Nigerian music, saying that it should be banned in their countries and all that? I think, just thinking now, um, just hearing it from you, mm. I think what the issue is, is it's a struggle that 
we went through here too, but it was a long time ago, a very long time ago, um, against foreign music, music from the United States. Yeah. So there was a time where there was a, a big uproar saying that radio stations were playing majority foreign music, you know, they needed to include more Nigerian music. But what we did as artists over here was we just made sure our craft was hot. Naturally, by the early, by the late 90s, early 2000s, naturally, you are not a station that's popping if you're not playing Nigerian music. Just because of the sheer quality, the sheer sweetness of the music that was coming out. So that was what we did as artists. So from my own perspective, that, that would be my response. But I, I, I wouldn't know from the other perspective. But yeah. it's an understandable um, grievance that people may have. We have a lot of young Nigerians watching us right now and also Africans in general. I mean, young Africans. If you have a message for young Africans, what would that message be? My message for young Africans is we need to wake up. Thank you. We need to know who we are. We need to love ourselves. Black is amazing. Black is beautiful. Black is strong. African is intelligent. African is innovative. African is rich. African is wealthy. You need to love yourselves. You need to believe in who you are. And the sky is our starting point. This guy is not a musician. Like, I, I don't know. I've been telling him he's not a musician. You need to quit that music career. Follow your passion. Because I've been following you keenly. And believe me, you're a politician. <laughs> You have wow. to get that politician out of you, man. This is an Go interesting it, angle. Man. If you think it's a politician, leave it as a comment. Let me know. Be I, I've been watching you a lot. I don't even know anything about your music, bro. Mm. All I know is this is Nigeria. Look how we live in now. <laughs> Everybody is a criminal. Everybody is a criminal. <laughs> criminal. Well, I want to say thank you so much thank for you. talking to me. I appreciate thank your time. You. And um, yeah, keep up thank the good work. Thank you so work. much. I really appreciate this. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's been nice hanging. Um, I hope you're having fun in Lagos. Fantastic. I mean, Lagos is a second home for me. Nice. And nice. Uh, tell them to subscribe and be part of this awesome channel. Subscribe, family. subscribe. Click on this button now to subscribe, okay? Bad guys say so. Uh. <laughs>